welcome to the Vigilante Dialogues. I am your host, Shayna Smith, welcoming you to another edition. With me tonight, I have a very special guest. She is none other than Mrs. British Virgin Islands 2016, Mrs. Angel Cameron. Pleasure to be here tonight. Well, thank you for joining us. We're looking forward to our discussion tonight about the pageant. I know some people have been hearing quite a bit about it over the last few months. So I'm looking forward to hearing more in terms of your platform and what this organization is all about. So tell us about yourself. So I am a Mrs. BVI 2016, Angel Cameron. I am a BVI lender, born, partially raised, and I'm a mom of three lovely children. I'm a wife of this year will be 14 years. And I am an entrepreneur. I'm a manager. I am an activist for environmental needs. I am almost everything you can think about. I am superwoman. So how did you fit this pageant into all of that? <laughs> so one of the things about becoming Mrs. British Virgin Islands 2016 or any year um, is balance. Mm -hmm. In order to be successful in anything that you do, balance is important. And initially, I was one of those people who said, nope, I don't have the time. I have three kids, have a family, have a career. But to be honest, if we're passionate about something, we find all the time that we need mm -hmm. to do that thing. And I thought it was very important for me to become passionate publicly about my country because I'm very passionate about my country, but I didn't have a platform to be able to propel other women like me who are busy, mm -hmm. but have a heart for charities. And that's what this show is all about. How much can you do for a charity? How much can you help a charity? And what are you passionate about? Okay. So for those who have, are just hearing about Mrs. British Virgin Islands for the first time, what is the pageant about and the organization behind of it win? So Mrs. British Virgin Islands is a subgroup under the Win BVI group or the Win Global group. Mm -hmm. And we are a branch from that. Win is women in need. Okay. So it's a group that was founded specifically for women who found a need within the community or had a personal crisis that they had overcome and wanted to share how they overcome it with other women. Mm -hmm. This global group then sat out and branched off and we have people like Alicia Green and a few others within our territory who have been a part of this group for many years. It's not a new organization. It's been around for some 16 years. Wow. We've had the likes of Jeanette Black. We've had the likes of uh, Perlene who've been involved in this. Siobhan Finley. We've had uh, Baina. We've had a whole bunch of women who've been involved in this over the years. And it's a group where the focus is charities. Mm -hmm. Unlike the normal pageant show, mm -hmm. our focus is really community, okay. country, women. Mm -hmm. So it's focused on in terms of community activism. It is. Okay, and supporting our community. Yes. So we have the Win Global organization, we have the BVI branch, and then from there, where does Mrs. BVI take you? So it takes me to the global stage of Mrs. Globe. Mm -hmm. Yes, so in November, I'll be heading off to Shenzhen, China to represent the territory. I'm extremely excited about it. I've been working hard. Um, towards that and that is just a bigger platform to showcase my country mm -hmm. and it's all those women from the different countries throughout the world they're doing the same thing showcasing their passion towards their particular charity but most importantly their country okay. and that's what I'm excited to do all right so what is your platform what have you been doing yes yeah, so I am a big green thumb person I'm terrible at planting so I'm not the green thumb as in the plants live you're a tree hugger I'm, I'm a tree hugger I'm definitely a tree hugger so my platform is environmental sustainability mm -hmm. my aim is that when my five-year-old turns 80 that the BVI looks the way it looks now I don't want to see too many houses on the hills I don't want to see our beautiful nature destroyed by development. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that we can sustain the BVI for years to come, and that's what my passion is about, okay. green BVI. Awesome, and that's such an important resource that we need to make sure that we yes. protect. So what have you been doing since you, you've won the pageant? 
who have been very busy. So I've been getting myself involved in a lot of other charities that I'm normally not involved in. One of those charities is near and dear to the heart of the Win BVI group, and that's the BVI Diabetic Association. Okay. We are a sponsor for that association in a way where we help to promote a lot of the activities that they have mm -hmm. and to bring awareness to how silent but deadly diabetes is within our community. Another one of the organizations that I have sort of pulled close to my heart is the BVI Autism Center. Uh, Ms. Lorna Dawson and her group have been doing an excellent job with the differently abled because sometimes we misinterpret different with less than. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that you're less than, it just means that you're unique. And I'm learning so much from these kids. Oh, this is awesome. So you have added even more <laughs> to your already busy schedule. But I think it's safe to say that you are being fruitful in whatever it is you're undertaking. Yes. All right. Well, we're going to take a break at this point um, and get a word from our sponsors. So we will be right back. Welcome back. You're tuned in to the Vigilante Dialogues. I am your host, Shana Smith. And with me this evening, I have been graced by the lovely Mrs. British Virgin Islands 2016, Mrs. Angel Cameron. Yes. And she's been sharing with us the um, a maraud. I don't know how to describe it. Anyway. <laughs> a very long list of, of activities um, for great causes. Yes. So I must, at this juncture, commend you and congratulate you. you. And wishing you all the best in advance when you go to China. Thank you. So tell us some more about the Environmental Sustainability Platform. What are you hoping to accomplish in your year? Three years ago, um, we started an initiative in the territory where the government partnered with private organizations, um, supermarkets, mm -hmm. to introduce reusable shopping bags. I don't know if you remember that initiative. I do recall. Yes, and I was one of the people who was very excited about that initiative because before the initiative, I was the young lady with the bags walking into the store. Mm -hmm. So I was the happy person when that initiative came in. I don't know if you've noticed that we've dwindled now because mm -hmm. that initiative is no longer being adhered to. Yeah. A lot of the supermarkets have gone back to willingly giving you plastic, plastic bags mm -hmm. or a lot of them have gone, oh, it's okay, we won't charge you 10 cents this time. Mm -hmm. Or you don't have a bag, that's okay. You know, those are the things that I want to keep at the forefront within our community. Mm -hmm. A lot of these habits start at home, but at home within a community setting. So if we practice that every time we go to the supermarket, we will take our own bags, what will happen? Mm -hmm. The supermarkets are gonna be forced not to buy them because mm -hmm. they're gonna be wasted. Yeah. Or they'll be forced to purchase reusable bags that people wouldn't mind paying at all 50 or $2 for. So that is one of the things that I want to bring back to the forefront. Okay. In addition to bring in a lot of activities relating to how do we educate our children about protecting our environment. Okay. We speak a lot about reducing, reusing, recycling. What mm -hmm. does it mean in practical terms? In terms of what you do at home. Yes, okay. and how do you implement it and make it stick? Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan, like I said, I'm a mom of three. I'm a big fan of quick fixes. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, in order for us to become environmentally friendly, quick isn't always best. Mm -hmm. A quick fix would be you buy several boxes of Caprison juices for your kids weekly. Those plastic containers for the Caprison juices fill up our landfill. We don't have a recyclable center here yet that can actively and sustainably recycle plastic. Yeah. So what can we do? You can purchase a water bottle and refill that and make juice. Mm -hmm. It's healthier, one, and it doesn't fill up the landfill. We're a very tiny group of islands. We're not as huge as we think. And our population is growing. And as it continues to grow, that means our waste level is building higher. Mm -hmm. And we pile this all down at Poplar Pond and somehow most of us imagine that it will disappear or they'll burn it away. Mm -hmm. Everything doesn't burn. So what do we do? My hope is to get us thinking about those sorts of issues. Okay. What can you do on a daily basis? Mm -hmm. Not when the need arises or the crisis becomes exponential, but on a daily basis yeah. to make sure that we reduce, we reuse, and we recycle everything. Mm -hmm. Which is awesome because it's something where I think it, it, it needs to, a community needs to take ownership of waste management because we're the ones that are generating yeah. all the waste when we go to the supermarkets and buy all these water, um, cases of water on sale. 
and then they end up, you know, having to be incinerated. So it, it puts a lot of strain, I think, on our environment that we don't take into consideration or we're taking for granted, actually. So that is an awesome effort. So in terms of, are you collaborating with the um, waste management department on anything or? So we're in talks with collaboration with not only waste man management department, but the environmental, um, in the environmental ministry. Um, okay. We're in talks with dealing with them on how do, can we help to promote? Okay. Because the the good thing about having a platform is people listen yes, on this level. You have level. the mic. I have the mic. So it makes it easy for me to help to propel causes that are already in action. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised. We have a lot of things happening within the community. I'm also trying to partner with the agriculture department. Okay. Because when it comes to environmental sustainability, that may require us to be farming sustainable. Mm -hmm. A lot of the things that we ship in to eat and drink come in these containers that fill up our waste. True. If we don't have to ship them in. True. We support locally mm -hmm. and then we build our own economy, but it also means that we create a better environment for years to come. Okay, so that's a win-win. A win. A win-win-win <coughs> win <Win>. organization <laughs> situation. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> that is great. I'm, all, I'm really excited to hear about all the work that's um, going on and going to be going on for the next, um, I guess for the rest of your reign. In terms of win, um, we were talking after the, br or during the break rather, in terms of what happens when you win the competition? What, what, hap what does the, the global organization do? So the global organization is Mrs. Globe International. Mm -hmm. And that is, let's call it our, 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 our fundraiser group for the Mrs the WIN organization and then sub-level Mrs. BVI organization. Okay. So that's why when in November, I will be heading to the Mrs. Globe. Mm -hmm. And what this does is it helps to propel our territory. If I perform well, and with your help, I'm hoping that you guys are gonna support me all the way. Mm -hmm. If we perform well as a territory there, we stand the chance of becoming a recipient of a monetary, but not just monetary, but the level of, uh, the level of notoriety that we mm -hmm. will get there. And access to greater and resources. access to resources. Uh, we will be able to partner with tons of international organizations to propel us in a lot of the industries that we've been looking for help for. Mm -hmm. So this puts you on a bigger platform for the country. Mm -hmm. It has absolutely nothing to do with the person behind the mic, okay. but it has so much to do with the country. And that's why I love, absolutely love being a part of this organization. A lot of these things we need to look beyond self Mm -hmm. And it, it forced me to look beyond, okay, what can I do for my country? It mm -hmm. forced me to say, how can I get help for my country? Mm -hmm. Because there's only so much I can do. But there's so much that we can do together and that internationally can be done to assist us if we just bring that notoriety to it. Okay. So you know you have a big job ahead of you. I do. <laughs> I do. In November. Uh, this year, I think you guys are having another fundraiser, uh, fundraiser, the Stiletto Walk. The Stiletto Walk. So the Stiletto Walk is a fundraiser that's coming up on July 16th at Captain Mulligan's. And what this is, it's a international uh, organization, so to speak. It's an international charity where literally women who have been abused, domestic violence situations, those women are taking a stand mm -hmm. and saying, can you walk in my shoe? Mm. I have been through X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. I have gone through the physical abuse, the emotional abuse. I have been through it all. But can you walk a mile in my shoe? Hence the name oh. Stiletto Walk. Nice. So what we plan to do is have a group of women and men Mm -hmm. So this is the one charity that we're going to have where the men are going to be taking the forefront on this because a lot of the abuse isn't just one-sided, mm -hmm. but we hear a lot about the abuse from men to women. Yes. A lot of the men don't report theirs, but we want them to take a stand and say, you know what, I will try to walk a mile in your <laughs> shoe. So we will have a few men out there in their heels awesome. and we're going to walk a mile in the Nanny K area. Okay. Just a very short mile. Mm -hmm. We don't want to overdo it in our stilettos. In stilettos yes. <laughs> Straight to the Captain Mulligan's ground where we're going to have a fantastic afternoon of awesome. events. So 
high heel competitions. Um, can you get dressed quickly in your heels competition? My husband does my makeup competition. We're going to wow. have a lot of interesting activities. Okay. Inclusive of those activities will be where we have a speaker who will talk about her experience with being a domestic violence victim. Okay. And I think it's important that we hear from people we know mm -hmm. what it's like. A lot of us have seen these situations. Mm -hmm. We know of people, but we stay silent. Mm -hmm. And this is our opportunity to say it's okay. Mm -hmm. Speech is a very powerful tool when it comes to healing mm -hmm. in these types of situations. Mm -hmm. And I firmly believe that the more you expose the truth for what it is, mm -hmm. it can no longer be a lie about you. Mm -hmm. Because we like to hide a lot of the secrets that we don't want to tell, including domestic abuse. So this is the one activity I'm extremely excited about. It should be fun. Okay. Can you imagine the guys out there running in their heels? I will be there with my camera. <laughs> <laughs> so is Family Support Network also going to be a part of this event? Family Support Network will be a part of this event. Okay. Um, we're going to have all those ladies out there. We're going to also have help from the government department, Ministry of Health and um, Social Development will also be a part of this event. Awesome. We're going to also be asking for some assistance from private organizations. So it should really be a really good event. Um, I'm at the moment looking for a young man who would be willing to talk about a situation. It can be anonymously or publicly, mm -hmm. but it would be good for us to hear a voice behind a male who has also suffered okay. from this type of um, abuse. Yeah. And I think, like you're saying, all of this is part of the healing process. It is. Where the community now supports them and shows support that, you know, is they're not to be ostracized or pushed to the side because of the situation that happened to them, but that they're still able to live their lives to the fullest. Yes, and I believe as a community, because we're so small, we only th take things to heart when it's personal. Yes. The minute you put a face to a situation, you feel it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important for us to put a face to these situations yeah. and to publicly say, you know what? Yes, it's happened, but I want to help the next person. Mm -hmm. I want the next young lady to know that you don't have to go through this. I need the next young man to know that it is not okay. So I think it's important for us to put faces so that we can feel that compassion. Yes. Very and important. that's what this event will do. Very important. So I have marked the date, July 16th. July 16th, the Captain Mulligan. The Stiletto Walk Fundraiser. Yes. Okay, and then there's another event coming up um, in September, an empowerment forum. Tell us a little bit about that. So this is going to be our big event before I head off to China. And the forum is with Dr. Tracy Kimball. Mm -hmm. She has a book and I'm... Um, Apologies, I don't have it with me, but it's called Sexy. Okay. And it defines what sexy means. And a lot of us think of sexy as just a physical attribute. Mm -hmm. but, but what does sexy mean? Look at yourself. Empower. Mm -hmm. It talks about that, the X factor. Mm -hmm. You. So it's, it's a really interesting book. And she's going to come down. She's going to talk about her book. She's also the head in the WIN organization. Okay. She is the head of that global organization that we are now sister under. Okay. And she's going to come down and she's going to grace us with our presence and have a full day of activities talking about issues with women, married women. She was abused. She also has done okay. the Stiletto Walk Foundation. Um, it's one of her babies under her umbrella. Okay. So it will be good to hear from a victim mm -hmm. um, and also a real person and to see where it has propelled her in her life because yeah. victim leads to victory only if you speak about it. Mm -hmm. And she will tell you how powerful that is. So that is going to be exciting. We're going to have more information about that coming up soon. That will be in September. Promises to be awesome. And this will be something that's open to the public. It will be open to the public. Okay. Um, we will have information coming out about it. It will be um, tickets. We're trying to include a lot of other activities. It's okay. like a seminar setting. Okay. Yes. So you can have that personal branch off from group to group and then we'll be able to hear forum wise okay. from a group, a panel of women, you know, how do we deal with owning our sexy? Wow. Okay. So I'll, I'll put that date down. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is great. This is great stuff. All right, so we have this the little walk fundraiser September, and then you're off to China in November. How long will you be over there, and what are some of the activities that you'll be involved in? So I'll be over there for about a week and a half, and you have everything from doing charity work. We'll be doing charity work over there. I know last year Siobhan went to the 
uh, senior citizens home and she performed for them and I saw the video and the oh pictures wow. and they absolutely loved it. So I plan to do the same thing. We'll be doing charities. There'll be tons of photo shoots. There'll be tons of um, activities for all the countries to get to know each other. Okay. And then you do the traditional pageantry thing. So we'll be expected to do a little bit of talent, um, mm -hmm. present on our platform, speaking a bit about our country, cultural wear, evening gown, swimsuit, you name it. Okay. So that sounds like a full week. It will definitely be a full week. Awesome. So you're in training now. Are you getting ready? I am in training now. <laughs> Let me tell you, you don't know how hard it is until you actually do it. I thought I was in shape until uh, Ariana <laughs> from Limitless <laughs> Fitness <laughs> proved to me that uh, not in, as a little bit more to it. There's a little bit more to it. You actually have to exercise. <laughs> awesome. Well, I know. I know that whatever you set your mind to, you're going to be successful at. So we're looking forward mm -hmm. to the end result. This is just going awesome. All right. So if you just tuned in, you missed an uh, interesting and lovely conversation with our Mrs. British Virgin Islands 2016. Yes, we do have a Mrs. I did say it correctly. Mrs. Angel Cameron, um, who is here with us tonight, talking about the WIN organization, Women in Need, which is part of a larger global organization. Um, it's so amazing that, you know, this has been such a little secret. So I'm glad you're, you're putting it out there and, you know, we're letting us know tonight what all has been involved and going on behind the scenes. So it's just been great work. So we're going to take a break now from our sponsors. And when Welcome we come back, back, you're tuned in to the Vigilati Dialogues. I'm your host, Shana Smith. And with me this evening, I have Mrs. Angel Cameron, our Mrs. British Virgin Islands 2016. I'm sure you've been seeing her all over <laughs> in the media. Um, I think I saw something you did. It was with Mother's Day? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. I saw the news article about that. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, so on Mother's Day, we decided, the committee decided that it was important that we um, showcase mothers, but not just mothers. Mm -hmm. We wanted to find the women in our community who were being overlooked. Mm -hmm. There's some mothers in our community who deserve a platform for themselves, but they don't get the stage for that. Mm -hmm. So with the help of the... Um, the BVI Diabetes Association with the help of several different random people throughout our organization and okay. throughout the community who we've been asking, if you were to honor somebody who deserves it, who would it be? Mm -hmm. And also with the help of the uh, FSN organization, okay. we were able to come up with three names of three women mm -hmm. who were deserving and deserving to be honored mm -hmm. but publicly given a platform so that people could see how how much they've been doing and mm -hmm. how well they've been doing it. So those were the unsung heroes. Those so were speak. the unsung hero moms. Okay. And the three women were Miss Eglantine Rollins. Mm -hmm. Eglantine is a mother of a four year old little girl who suffers from diabetes. Wow. She is actually the youngest patient in the territory. Okay. Uh, recorded mm -hmm. and currently um, who suffers with We've diabetes. Okay. Yes. And the BVI Diabetic Association has been doing a lot to assist them because you can imagine how difficult it yes. is. She was born with this condition. Um, as far as her parents know, it's not hereditary of any kind. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's type 2. And it, it puts a, a bit of a spoke in a child yeah. because you just want to play yeah. she will remember to eat something or to, to and it created a bit of an atmosphere for her okay. so with the help of the bvi diabetic association they have really been helping eglantine and her daughter to get the treatment awesome. that they need because it's expensive mm -hmm. and the support that she needs mm -hmm. and Very she important. really appreciated knowing that somebody out there thought it was important enough to say Happy Mother's Day to her. Awesome. The second lady that we honored was Angela. Mm -hmm. Angela George, I believe her name is, and she works at the Rotown Wholesale uh, Supermarket. And this is somebody you would always see at customer service. Mm -hmm. So next time you go, if she's smiling, it's Angela yeah. George. <laughs> uh, this young, she has two children, and she has been through a lot in her life. She's gone through a divorce. She's had a lot of hard time. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing about it is mm -hmm. she always wears a smile. 
So a lot of people would never know that she's had a hard time in her life mm -hmm. and she's at the stage where she's bouncing back with grace, with vigor and with a smile. Mm -hmm. And it was so great to see the reaction um, on her face because she wasn't expecting far from <laughs> anything <it>. far <laughs> from it. Yeah. And it was so good to see the reaction on her face when she realized that, you know, people see mm -hmm. that you've struggled. But you managed to do that with a smile. Yeah. How is it possible? Mm -hmm. a, a really honorable young lady. She, she made me cry because she went through a lot and she has just continued to hold herself up gracefully. Awesome. The other young lady that we honored, and she's not so young, I hope she doesn't get mad for me <laughs> saying that, is Miss Adarty Turnbull. Now I know what you're going to say. I see the look. She's not a mom. No, I can't say that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, she was a mom to all of us in she school. She was, yes. She yes. was a mom to a lot of people at the BVI High School, but not mm -hmm. only that. Based on what she could remember, so it might be more than this, mm -hmm. she has about 80 God children. Wow. And those are the ones she can remember. Yeah. And that's not just in BVI. Mm -hmm. We're talking globally. Global, wow. So she is a mom in her own right. Mm -hmm. And I was honored when her name came up because she is my godmother. Oh, wow. And I spent a lot of years and afternoons at her house. Mm -hmm. So I know what it was like to grow up with Aunt Adority or mm -hmm. Teacher Adority, as you yeah. would have remembered her yeah. as. And she was really honored because she kept saying, you know what, well, I'm, not, I'm not a mom. Mm -hmm. But we take that phrase so loosely. Mm -hmm. There's so many women in our community who haven't born a child, but they are mothers in their own right. Mm -hmm. You don't need to have given birth to become a mom. There's so many women who've adopted. Mm -hmm. There's so many women who have taken in on their own, like Teacher Adarty mm -hmm. and her sister, Miss Inez. Mm -hmm. They have done the unthinkable. Mm -hmm. And they have gone far beyond without having one single childbirth pain. Mm -hmm. They felt the same level of pain for over 80 children, mm -hmm. personally and then community-wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, that's definitely, that was a, a red letter day. Yes, <laughs> it was. It I was missed that exciting. one, but that's awesome. That's yeah. great that that was done. Very and exciting, full of tears, but yeah. it was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> and I think like you're saying that a lot of times we, we think of only biological parents um, as having that title but then yeah. so many people fill that role in other people's lives and you don't even know it until you know sometimes when they're gone you realize the type of influence yes that they had on you and and changed your life because of it so yes. that's awesome so what are you going to do for father's day so father's day we're sticking with the same mo we've got three fathers that we're going to honor mm -hmm. three deserving fathers and we've solicited the help of the community and some other organizations FSN BVI Diabetic Association and some other organizations to pinpoint to us who do you think mm -hmm. so we have our list and we're just in the process of narrowing down okay it's right around the corner right around the corner okay. right around the corner and the same rules apply mm -hmm. you don't need to biologically have a kid to be a dad mm -hmm. there's so many fathers out there who are really Uncle John. Yeah. But he's been so much of a dad to you mm -hmm. that y you can't think on anything else. He's played that role. He's played that role. Mm -hmm. Or you have so many men out there who, it's not their kid, but they always seem to chuck a 20 in your hand or give you an encouraging word or mm -hmm. come out to your football games. These are the men that we're trying to find and honor. And okay. there are a lot of men out there who get overlooked. And a lot of times when Father's Day comes around, we find a lot of women saying, Happy Father's Day to this mom who's been both mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And I think it's high time that we give dads their day back. Yes, we give them due recognition. Yes, so I plan to give dads their day back. Awesome. Don't be mad at me, they deserve <laughs> it. <laughs> yes, we require to balance the system. Yes. We have to do that. That is awesome. So let's talk a little bit more, or I should say, let's pivot now and talk about, um, in terms of with the organization as women in need. So what are some of the issues that you see in terms of what challenges, um, let's say, that women face in our society that you like to see addressed or, you know, have ideas about? So to be honest with you, when I started this journey um, on March 19th, I thought that the journey would be solely about the BVI Diabetic Association and my platform of environmental sustainability. Mm -hmm. As I've been going out into the community, it's been breaking my heart because there are so many women out there who have a wide range of needs. Mm -hmm. No air to listen to, you lack trust because you know we're a prideful country so we don't want to talk our business, mm -hmm. we don't want it to be on the street. And some of those needs range from 
not having finances to take care of daily things to how can I be successful in general as a woman? Mm -hmm. How do I stand up to the plate of a man? And one of the things that has really come to light is how can we sustain marriages? Mm. And it's been one of the things that has really been playing on me because I got married young. I was uh, 22, 20, 22 when I got married. Mm -hmm. And we've been married for 14 years, Javon and I. I love you, honey. Um, and it's not easy. And there seems to be this notion that marriage is a magic trick. Mm -hmm. The day you get married, everything goes well, absolutely well. It becomes perfect. And they live happily ever after. Cinderella. <laughs> I, I believe this is, this is the notion. And it's mm -hmm. been... It's been quite a journey. Mm -hmm. um, I must thank uh, Gadites who pinpointed a few things to me. And after he said, you know, what are you going to do for the broken marriages in the territory? The bell went off in my head mm -hmm. because I could literally sit in that second and name about 16. Mm. That's a problem. Yes. How do we fix it? The heart of a country is the home. Mm -hmm. So in order for our country to be sustained well, environmentally, economically, financially, Everything. in order for us to be sustained, mm -hmm. our home lives has to be balanced. Yes. So it's my mission to get into the home lives, not your private business, but how can we help sustain marriages? What are the tools that we need? Mm -hmm. there's, a, um, there's a few organizations out there that help deal with that. In addition to FSN, who has counseling for that sort of stuff, there's the Grace Center, who does that sort of work. There's mm -hmm. several churches that are doing a lot of activities surrounding mm -hmm. marriages. And I think it's one of the important things because I believe a marriage is sacred to the couple, but also to God. Mm -hmm. And a lot of children and homes are being broken up for something that could be fixed, yeah. Yeah. a small issue that could be fixed. So it's my intention to expose the myths about a marriage because mm -hmm. it's not a magic wand yeah. and the ring doesn't wave it it requires work how do we work towards it mm -hmm. let's find out follow me make sure you get onto my mrs bvi facebook page mm -hmm. follow us on twitter follow us on instagram mrs bvi lc mm -hmm. i daily continue to update on various things i had a photograph up a couple weeks ago uh, in the middle of a photo shoot where my face wasn't too happy mm -hmm. and my husband was standing there fixing my crown and I asked the public, caption this. Mm -hmm. And you know what most of them said? Oh, he's fixing your crown and you aren't happy. That's a typical black woman. Why? Why do we have that notion? Oh, wow. Why do we have that notion? And some people were saying, oh, he's saying to you, you don't need the crown. Um, you can be happy without it. Mm -hmm. But I found it interesting that we would go to a negative connotation first before we get to the positive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The truth is, I was hungry. So <laughs> my face, <laughs> so my face wasn't so the best. So a hungry woman is an angry woman. A hungry woman is an angry woman. It's a true statement. Oh, my face wasn't the best, but I wanted to see what would the public think mm -hmm. was happening in a moment of this still shot. Yeah. What would you think? Just in that split second. Just in that split second. Mm -hmm. And it really opened my eyes about what the views were. And yeah. we had several married women on there and single women on there talking about, you know, and this is the problem. Mm -hmm. A lot of us don't see us for who we are because we compare ourselves to other women. So mm -hmm. we can't stand on the platform. We need to be. There are a lot of women who feel that they need to have a crown in order to be on a platform. Mm -hmm. Or to have a voice. Or, or to have, a, have voice. a voice. Yeah. This platform should do nothing for you. Mm -hmm. You are your biggest critic mm -hmm. and your biggest supporter. Yes. So it's important that we encourage each other. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I'm looking to do, not just to married women, but to young women. Mm -hmm. I was about to say, because it's something where we need to be proactive yes. in terms of, you know, I think one of the biggest mistakes we make in life is that we don't prepare ourselves when it comes to relationships. Yes. We go to school and we study and we get certified and, you know, and everything else. But our relationships seem to take last place, if at all. And then this is one of the most critical components of your life mm -hmm. because you have to deal with people. And if you do want to get married, you know, as a single person, we have to make sure that we have the strongest relationship skills that we could possibly have and have right expectations, as you're saying, that when we do get married, what, what is it that we're bringing to the table? What is he bringing to the table so that we can have a fruitful marriage and have a good um, environment for our family? And what does it look like? Mm -hmm. We never think about what does a marriage look like? 
we see it mm -hmm. but we don't think about it yeah. so we look at the TV shows and we look at the the movies the and movies the music. lifetime oh my goodness lifetime <laughs> is famous for it and mm -hmm. you listen to the songs mm -hmm. and and you see the commercials and in that split second you already dreamt what Mr. Wright should look like. You know what your life is going to be like in 15 mm -hmm. years. Well, I'm mm -hmm. here to give you a reality check yeah. <laughs> because it's important that you expect mm -hmm. the worst. There was a, a radio station that used to say that during Hurricane. Expect the worst. Oh, Mr. Letson, you get ready for, for the worst. Expect the best, I think, get ready for the worst. And, and accept, accept what, what God, God says. says. Yep. Well, I want you to apply that theory mm -hmm. to your marriage. Mm -hmm. Expect the best. Be prepared for the worst. Mm -hmm and accept what you've chosen mm -hmm. and be committed to making it work you're going to accept that so there's no escape when in acceptance mm -hmm. you're going to accept that so it's important that we start from young no one taught me how to be a wife no one taught me how to be we a had mother that conversation the other we day. did yeah we did no one taught me how to do that mm -hmm. after i had my first child my mom stepped in and started giving the advice mm -hmm. but no one said before it was time for me to become a mom what the journey would be like yeah we always wait until the end result to give advice or when problems start and or then when it's kind of we arises. try to fix the issue rather than saying okay how do we prevent that or put you in a better yes. position that if something does arise that you don't pull all your hair out pack your bag <laughs> yes and head home and then when is an acceptable time to have these conversations mm -hmm. these are the things i want to bring out within the community mm -hmm. Some of us think that it's, it's too young when they're in primary school to have these conversations. We need to introduce the conversations now. Mm -hmm. Not only the conversations, but it's important that we introduce self-love to our girls, mm -hmm. to our boys. We need to introduce that self-love from an early age. You look beautiful today, baby. You look handsome, son. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like it when you tuck your school clothes in like that. That is very nice. Mm -hmm. We need to introduce that from a young age. Because those young people grew up to be us, mm -hmm. the adults that we see today. Exactly. And we're a bit dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. And it's simply because no one enforced a right mind in us. Yeah. We tend to correct the bad behavior rather than enforce yes. the right behavior. Yes. So it, it, it's a constant struggle back and forth. And, you know, it, it, you're so on point with what you're saying because it's something where, you know, I remember speaking one time in a platform and saying that, you know, the family is in crisis. And this is the bedrock of our society. So social ills aren't just something that shows up in the street like yes. trash. You know, it, it's coming from someplace. And, and there's and a root years. cause behind of it. Yep, and it takes years. A social ill forms over time. Mm -hmm. Just like the islands, just like the coral. Mm -hmm. It all forms over time. And let me tell you, it will either be as beautiful as a coral or it will be as ugly as the trash that we've been piling up. Mm -hmm. Which way are we going to steer our community? Mm -hmm. It starts with our children, but not only does it start with them, it starts with us. Who is teaching the right way? Exactly. It becomes acceptable to leave a bad situation. It becomes acceptable to not be involved. Mm -hmm. But who is saying, okay, let's sit down and dissect it. Mm -hmm. Is it something we can work through? If this happens, what happens? Who is sitting down and saying, you know, you saw that movie that we looked at? Even though that daddy and that mommy didn't work out, that's not necessarily how it goes. Mm -hmm. Even though these parents had children out of wedlock, that's not what I want for you. Mm -hmm. Who is saying that? Yeah. We're letting the, the, the media and everything else train them. Mm -hmm. And then we want to come in and auto-correct. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't mm -hmm. work that way in real life. Mm -hmm. So I want to bring those issues to the forefront. Are you training your daughter? Mm -hmm. Are you training your son? And what are you training them for? And what are you training them for? It's forced me <coughs> and my husband even to mm -hmm. sit back because people have been calling him Mr. BVI. It's funny. Yes, that's I my think word we're going to need to give him a sash soon. <laughs> <laughs> people have just been going, you're Mr. BVI, right? Mm -hmm. It's funny. But my husband and I had to sit down and think about it after these issues started coming to light. Mm -hmm. What are we teaching our kids? Mm -hmm. So now we've been forcing my eight-year-old son to pull the chair out for his sister. Mm -hmm. Those are things we need to start teaching our kids. Yeah. How do, how, if you can't treat your sister well, mm -hmm. how are you going to pick up a wife? Mm -hmm. How are you going to treat a girlfriend? How are you going to treat a stranger? Mm -hmm. So we've been pulled the chair out, mm -hmm. set the table, do this. Do that. Nope, you wash the dishes. It's not just a girl thing. Mm -hmm. Men can wash the dishes too. Yeah. They, learn, to they learn they need to be independent as well. Yes. And these are the things I want us to start implementing. The etiquette of life. Mm -hmm. 
And as you say, we've become certified and learned in everything else mm -hmm. except how to live a fruitful life. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm a spiritual person. I'm a Christian, a lover of God. So for me, that is my forefront. Mm -hmm. Once I've learned how to put God first, I know where my parameters go. Yeah. I know where my circle can take me. I know how far and how low I need to be. Yeah. We all need to have a standard in our life. And if we set that standard personally, you'll be surprised what we can do as a country. Yeah. And it all starts with one. It all starts with one. It all starts with or one. Or several. Are you on board? I'm on board. <laughs> <laughs> what you, wh while you were speaking, what keep words keep popping up in my mind was about influence, impact, and intentional. Ooh, I like that. Because it's something where, again, we have to be intentional about what are we training our children or what are we teaching them because they're like sponges. They really sit yes. in their environments and soak up everything. So if all they see is arguing rather than, you know, having a constructive conversation where I don't agree with what your opinion is, but we somehow come to a resolution about the situation. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, is it they see that violence is how people resolve their issues? Because then that's what lands them in your court. And then we want to know well, why, you know, I don't know. They don't what behave happened? Him. He grew up in a good <laughs> home. <laughs> He's not behaving. Yeah. But the uh, they children wear two things. They wear their clothes and they wear their parents. Yes. So, and it's something I really see it so much more true um, when we see the negative behavior because truth be told we are a product of our parents we are. you know good bad and in between and you know but we had to come of age and start to make some decisions for our own and if there are things that we feel that weren't done you know the right way in the generation before we now have to take that mantle and decide this and we're gonna break this hair yep. and we're gonna make a difference yeah. and make sure that the next generation that comes along is, is better off than us. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's only fair to them, I would think. I agree. I did, a, um, I did a, motion, a motivational speech at the Willard Wheatley Primary School. They invited me to their PTA meeting mm -hmm. to do a motivational speech uh, last month. And what I found very interesting is a lot of the parents and the teachers were complaining about, you know, the kids being this way and parents are going, but that's not how they are. And then it dawned on me. Children can only react to what they know. And it's important that we stop pretending mm -hmm. because that happens a lot. Not my child. And, but, uh, but not only that, we pretend in public. You know, I've been guilty of doing it. I'm a mom, I've been guilty of doing it. Mm -hmm. You let them get away with small things at home. Mm -hmm. And when you go get into public, you give them the speech in the car. Now listen, you can't do this, 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 this. But they're used to doing it, so we pretend. Mm -hmm. And children can pretend. Mm -hmm. So they do what they're, the learned behavior that mm -hmm. they're accustomed they're to. They're genuine. Th and they're very genuine and innocent mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. And then they act out what they know. Yes. And once that information came to light at this PTA, the light bulb went off in the heads of these parents. Mm -hmm. So if your kid is yelling when you're not around, that means you're yelling a lot at home. Where are they getting it from? They're picking up these little signals Someplace. that we think yeah. just stays at home, mm -hmm. but they're acting it out elsewhere. Mm -hmm. How do we autocorrect this type of stuff? You have to change. Yeah, it starts with you. It starts with you. So parents, you have a very important role to yes. play. Very yes. important role. Well, Angel, we are winding down our hour. Imagine that went so oh quickly. <laughs> okay, so tell us more about, I guess, how would someone want to, if they wanted to get involved in WIN or the pageant, um, Mrs. BVI, how would they get involved? So uh, we like to call it the Mrs. BVI LC, Lifestyle Challenge. Uh -huh. To be truthful, all the women who've been involved in a lifestyle challenge so far have continued on that lifestyle. Siobhan is still very active and has been partnering with me. You have Abina and a bunch of the other ladies. Okay. Alicia was a Mrs. BVI. Did you know that? And she's the head of the local chapter here mm -hmm. and still heavily involved. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested, we're looking for married women. You could be divorced. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have children, but we're looking for married women. 50 is our, our, is our limit. Mm -hmm. So married women between the legal age of 18 and 49. Mm -hmm. If you're interested and you want to make a change for your country, not necessarily just for you, but for your country, or you have a passion for charities, mm -hmm. you have a passion for issues that are community-based, be sure to contact us. Hit us up with a message on our Facebook page, Mrs. BVI LC. Make sure to hit up our website, MrsBritishVirginIslands.com. 
make sure you hit us up on uh, Twitter, hit us up on Instagram, Mrs. BBI LC Life Challenge. And we're looking for the women. We're actually accepting applications now. So Shayna, if you get married in the next <laughs> month or two, we will be happy to have you apply. I'll make a note. <laughs> <laughs> we will be happy to have you apply, but it's been a pleasure. It's really been a this pleasure awesome. to be here. I look forward to your uh, soon to come marriage so that you can become Yes, that'd be the first step. <laughs> <laughs> so you can be We hit the step next one, contestant. yeah. We hit step one and we get <laughs> on there. But this this is awesome in terms of community activism because I always say that we need so much more of it. And then in terms of the ownership of it, because you you've just taken this to another level as far as like, you know, you're taking this really personal and saying, yeah. Hey guys, you know, this is what's needed, this is what I believe in and you know, we all just need to get on board and get with the program. Yes. So congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> One of the things I've learned is that we wait until someone is crowned to say that they are Mrs., Miss, or Mr., whatever. Mm -hmm. The truth is, we are all that. Mm -hmm. You are Miss BVI because country should be important to you. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that I want to leave with your audience with us. Okay. Country should be important. All right, great. So we have all the social media sites where you can follow her and see what she's up to. Trust me, this is a very busy lady. But um, as I heard, it, it actually was said today, it's not about being busy, it's about being fruitful. Yes. So we see the evidence in terms of all these different activities. And, you know, I really do hope that, you know, you continue to get invited to different audiences to spread this message as far and wide as possible. And you are welcome back here on the Dialogues at any time to continue to update us um, as you. you go into um, your trip for China, and even beyond that. Yes. You know, to definitely, to I know you're going to continue the work. Oh yeah, it's a lifestyle challenge. Of, right? um, yes, it, so it's, it's you, you, she's already converted. <laughs> <laughs> This is great. So, Angel, thank you for being it here. It was a pleasure. Tell my royal family I said hello. This, I this will. is my royal family, <laughs> okay? I just want to give a shout out to uh, some of our sponsors. Oh, great. Flow is a sponsor of the Mrs. BVI uh, organization. Beautiful by Jazine. I Every time you see me adorned, it's from them. Make sure you go out and you check out Marsha. They actually have a personal stylist there. I never have to pick anything out. She's mm -hmm. mastered my style. I want to say um, a special thank you to the BVI a Diabetic Association, the BVI Autism. Hi, guys. I just want to say thank you to the community because you guys have really been supportive. It's been a pleasure, Shana, mm -hmm. and I can't wait to come back for part two. Uh, sure. <laughs> Anytime. You have been tuned in to an awesome, excellent episode of the Vigilante Dialogues. I am your host, Shana Smith, saying let us continue the change in conversation. Mm -hmm.